All right, it says uh, time independent wave function of a particle with mass m is given by that. The way the alpha is positioned, I think it's defined so that you get something that looks kind of like a standing wave over a limited uh, region of space and you know zero outside of the limited region. So, okay. Um, so uh, I think uh, mechanically it should be remarkably similar to what we just did for question number one. So we'll just uh, go through it without a lot of explanation this time. So I'm setting up the normalization condition, uh, psi absolute value squared, the x. Now I note that the wave function in, in this time independent wave function is entirely real. So I can simplify this quite a bit. Uh, I can, for one, set my limit of integration from negative pi over 2 alpha to pi over 2 alpha. And, um, and just to write down the function as a squared cosine squared alpha x dx. Now I'm going to do a substitution that um, will make, make uh, use of computer algebra system a little bit simpler. In fact, uh, simple enough that you can maybe even do this on a graphing calculator. So I'm going to make this substitution. u is equal to alpha x. That simplifies uh, something quite a bit. Um, which <laughs> let me show you. Um, so with this substitution, you have du is equal to alpha dx, or the the this substitution tells you that um, dx is equal to du over alpha. Now this is how I I like to do u substitution or algebraic substitution with the definite integrals. As I'm substituting in the new expression, I also do the limits of uh, integration. So to get the limits uh, in terms of u, what I do is I, um, I plug in minus pi over 2 alpha into the x here. Then resulting value gets me uh, the lower limit in terms of u. So that's going to be minus pi over 2 alpha times alpha. Alpha cancels out. So I'll get minus pi over 2. Um, and for the upper limit, it'll become pi over 2. And I have a squared, that doesn't change, times cosine squared of, instead of alpha x, I have u times, instead of dx, I have uh, du over alpha. And what this substitution has done for me is uh, it separated that expression into these two parts. I have a squared over alpha, that's one algebraic part, and note the special feature of this remaining part, minus pi over 2 to pi over 2 uh, cosine squared u du. This is an entirely numerical expression. So this is what I mean. You could do this even in a graphing calculator if you wanted to. Um, I'm going to, uh, oh, I have a feeling that's going to end up in something very simple, but um, <laughs> let me just uh, do a little bit of overkill and do this integral anyway. Um, so I'm integrating from, uh, integrating cosine of x squared from, uh, in terms of x, it, x here, quote unquote x here is a dummy variable, so it doesn't matter what I call it, whether x or u. So it goes from minus pi over 2 to plus pi over 2. Um, evaluate. And yeah, <laughs> I figured it's going to get me something super simple, 1 over 2 pi. So if we had done this calculation in your graphing calculator, you would have gotten... Um, Oh, I'm pretty sure that means 1 over 2 times uh, pi is in the numerator. Um, all right, so um, so this is the expression you have for normalization condition. That a squared 
over alpha times one half times pi is equal to one. So solving this for a, you get a is equal to, let's see here, square root of two alpha over pi. And looking back at here, um, Oh, I don't know if this tells you anything. Uh, alpha does have unit of inverse meter. Um, and I will tell you that A having unit of... Um, oh, yeah, actually, I guess the question gives it away. A should have unit of minus one, um, minus one half. So, uh, so, so yeah, it, it, that I think all works out. Um, so plug in the numbers yourself. <laughs> I'm just going to leave that there. And it asks now for the probability that the particle can be found on the interval from... Uh, yeah, this is a small portion of the interval. It's not quite one half. Uh, yeah, so so this here, so this was part A. So for part B, the calculation kind of goes the same way it did for problem one. So for B, it's the exact same calculation you did in uh, part A, except instead of your integral going over all space, it's explicitly going from one, zero to one half alpha. And, um, and the, the integral is the same, a squared, um, yeah, a squared cosine squared over um, alpha x dx. Um, and I'll, I, I should do, imagine doing the same u substitution as before, because this will again help me simplify the expression so that, um, so that the resulting integral is doable, uh, even on a less sophisticated computer algebra system. So with that substitution, my limit of integration becomes, um, from zero to, um, you know, zero times alpha is zero. Zero, uh, one over two alpha times alpha is one half. And the remainder of coefficients, I have a squared. So that's gonna be two alpha over pi square root squared uh, times cosine squared of alpha x, that's u, dx, that's uh, du over alpha. So let me pull out the alpha times du. Oh, alphas cancel out. How convenient. <laughs> so, okay. So I think when I do this calculation, I'm going to get something that's totally numerical. So let me uh, work through that. It's going to be, um, in, so same integrand, x this time going from 0 to not pi over 2, but just 1 over 2. And uh, let me actually multiply this to uh, 2 over pi in this here. And I'll just uh, put this into uh, numerical evaluator thingy so that I get on the numerical answer that I'm expecting. So the area under the, the, the curve of the probability density function is 0 0.293. Let me plug it in so that I have some indication that I'm on the right path. And yeah, there you go. Um, it asks, find the particle's average position. Oh, yeah, <laughs> you could have probably guessed the result correctly. Um, and this is what I mean. The answer, when you go through the whole thing, it's going to end up being zero. Because um, how would you, so I mean, I'm relying on my intuition here. Um, here's one way you can figure out the answer must to be zero. So, so um, uh, let me give you more detailed justification why answer there ought to be zero. It's because when you look at your wave function, it's uh, a, a... Actually, I guess, you know what, uh, you don't... Well, let me, let me write down the wave function a times cosine of um, alpha x. 
And uh, what matters here is that this is defined over a symmetric interval. X goes from some negative something to uh, positive uh, same thing. So it's defined over symmetric interval. So when you do the integral, it's over this symmetric interval. And when you do this integral minus lambda to lambda, and for the um, operator x, it does end up being just x times psi absolute value squared dx. And this is the thing to notice. Uh, when you look at the functional form of cosine squared alpha x, this is an even function. It, the function has an even symmetry. And x is an odd function. So odd function times even function gets to you odd function. So you are integrating over a symmetric interval over an odd function. That is why this should be equal to zero. So, and there's also, if you have enough physical intuition, the physical intuition will tell you that it should be zero there. So that's it as far as it goes. And it asks for the particle's average momentum. And here, again, it says you could have probably guess the result correctly. And the result is that, that it's zero. Um, I guess I might have been giving away too much by telling you that you could have guessed it. But let me go through the argument again. So here, it, it takes a little more step than in C to give the correct justification, the mathematical justification, you actually do need the expression for psi because in the case of the momentum operator, you do have to start out with the operator, uh, the operator sandwiched between the wave function. So psi complex conjugate times minus i h bar over, oh well, wait, I guess just minus i h bar. Um, minus i h bar, the derivative with respect to x, and it's this derivative that complicates things somewhat so that you can just freely uh, rearrange the terms here. Now, when you imagine applying this derivative operator, then, um, so, you know, it applies to this portion, cosine of alpha x, so out of this part, you get something that uh, is proportional to sine of alpha x. I mean, there's a minus sign, but that doesn't matter. So what you have again is the function on this part, you know, cosine of alpha x. Cosine of alpha x, so this is proportional to cosine of alpha x. This is even. Sine of alpha x, that's odd, over a symmetric interval. So even function times all the function over a symmetric, um, integrated over a symmetric interval, they're going to integrate to zero. That's why it's zero here. Now, part E is where you do have to be careful. Um, the easy mistake to make is I think, oh, my momentum was zero. So momentum squared over 2n that's going to be zero again, and that's not the case. If you paid attention for the infinite square wall problem, you know that that's not the case. So with the party, um, you can kind of see in the hint that it doesn't hint that you can guess the result correctly. That's because you can't. You actually have to go through the calculation. So you have to set up the calculation. That's quite similar to what we did in uh, problem one. So my... So the thing that I'm uh, setting up is integral over all space of the complex conjugate of the wave function times um, the, the kinetic energy operator plugging in the expression for the momentum operator. It's going to end up being, um, let me write it out, minus, uh, minus comes from minus i squared, h bar squared, over 2m times the second deriv position derivative. And that operator is acting on the wave function, dx is equal to zero. All right, uh, I think I might actually be able to do this by hand if I do this carefully. Um, 
So let me write it out. My integral over all space becomes uh, integral from um, over the part where my wave function is not zero. So that's going to be from x equals, um, well, I don't remember, <laughs> um, uh, uh, minus pi over 2 alpha, uh, minus pi over 2 alpha to um, pi over 2 alpha. And my, uh, the, because my wave function is real, the complex conjugate is just a times cosine of alpha x times minus h bar squared over 2m. And I think I can actually do the second derivative of this in my head because it's uh, simple enough. Um, so I apply chain rule to cosine of alpha x and each application of chain rule brings out a factor of alpha. So the first derivative will be minus the sine alpha x times alpha. The second derivative will turn sine back into cosine. So when I take the two derivatives of psi with respect to x, what I will end up with is uh, the coefficients a times alpha squared times, now the, the derivative that I did, minus the sine, sorry, not sine, sine that turned it back into cosine, minus cosine alpha x dx. Note um, remarkable simplifications here. The minus signs cancel out. And uh, let me factor out a bunch of things. Um, so when I do, so I'm going to factor out h bar squared over 2n. And, um, oh, let me factor out alpha squared. Alpha squared. And I think the rest I'm just going to leave not factored out. Because it's one place where I can identify the functional form and uh, identify that something we've done before. So the remaining terms are a squared times cosine squared alpha x dx. Does this look familiar? It should. It's uh, what we did way up in part A. That was the expression that we normalized, which means uh, we actually set this equal to be 1 by setting the proper coefficient for the, the normalization constant. So, so I don't actually have to do this integral. This was a set to be equal to 1 by the, the circumstances. So my answer here for kinetic energy is h bar squared of um, alpha squared over 2n. Ah, that's looking familiar. Um, is that actually exactly the same answer as what we did in question 1? Yeah, uh, yeah, I guess that's just totally accidental. But, uh, oh well. <laughs> Let me just do copy and paste of that. Um, now, you know, don't always expect your um, expect your kinetic energy to have that form. Uh, here, it's just the way the wave functions were specified. It's just it's a happy accident. <laughs>